We always end up thinking about airplanes, right? But there is another mode of transport that is really gaining attention recently. Maglev trains. China's high-speed rail network, as well as the launching of their new and incredibly fast maglev train, is about to take transportation to a whole new level. This can run at speeds of up to 600 kilometers per hour. Well, let's speak about what this means for China's internal development as well as its intention to build its high-speed rail network beyond its borders as part of the Belt and Road Initiative, which is now underway. And of course, let's speak about how the United States and other foreign adversaries are intervening in the region to attempt to prevent this. Let's get this video started. According to CNN, China has unveiled the world's fastest train, a maglev bullet train capable of reaching speeds of 600 kilometers per hour or 373 miles per hour, if you're still doing the math, which made its premiere in Qingdao, China on Monday. It was developed by the state-owned China Railway Rolling Stock Corporation and is widely regarded as the world's fastest train. If you're in Thailand and see the CRRC logo, it's likely that you're riding public transportation in Bangkok as Thailand has recently purchased a large amount of rolling stock from China. The Shanghai Maglev, the world's fastest maglev train, is now in operation in China. It travels 30 kilometers from Shanghai's Pujang International Airport to the city's outskirts, then you may take the metro into the city or anywhere else you wish to go from there, depending on your destination. As a result, China has unveiled its maglev system, which will transport passengers between large cities. In fact, it is considering connecting key cities with this system. This will reduce travel time even farther than the currently existing high-speed rail network in the country. China is currently working on expanding its high-speed rail network outside its own borders. China's high-speed rail network has been a resounding success. By that, I mean that passengers ride the train more than once a year, which means that they move billions of people every single year, as I mentioned. And when you sum up all of those passengers and their flights, the total comes to billions of dollars. So, this is from the Global Times website. This is the state-run media in China. China's high-speed rail system has carried a record number of passengers, 10 billion which is more than the total number of people on the planet. Years ago, the West claimed that China was blowing its time and money by creating this high-speed rail network, but no one bothered to write about it. Today, it is common knowledge. The Insider piece from 2011 also stated that a backlash against Chinese high-speed rail is brewing, while also alleging that the system is experiencing problems as a result. And of course, it isn't any kind of problem. And now the Western media is claiming that it is in peril because they have taken it too far and that it must be curtailed immediately. Of course, they desired China to cease doing things that are proving to be effective. If we summarize everything written in the video, it basically says that the problem is that high-speed rail is expensive to build and operate, necessitating high ticket prices to break even. The bulk of long-distance passenger traffic, especially during peak holiday periods, is migrant workers for whom the advantage cost of time is relatively low, even if they could manage a high-speed train ticket, which is unlikely given their limited incoherence. China has undergone tremendous expansion, which has been aided in part by the high-speed rail network. People can now afford to go by rail. Some of these lines are extremely profitable, while others are not. But that isn't the objective of infrastructure development. It's not all about making money directly from infrastructure. A lot of it is about facilitating the growth of other things. Things that wouldn't be able to grow if it weren't for this infrastructure. So you accept the infrastructure loss because you are gaining so much more elsewhere. This is what happens when a government, such as China's, is able to understand the big picture and make decisions based on it, rather than myopically worrying about over profits in every endeavor. That is guaranteed to fail since everything must operate together and not everything can be optimized for profit. The same misinformation is being spread by the USA Department through Voice of America, the USA Department's media group. It's terrible because it is landlocked. It is in such bad shape. They have no method of connecting to the region's economies. If you've ever visited Laos, you'll know that it's a mountainous country. Before China came in and built highways, 
It took three days travel to the destination with the pilot taking three days through winding mountainous roads that were extremely dangerous. Thankfully, those highways have reduced the journey to a day, and with the high-speed rail, it will be reduced to just hours. As a result, Lao will be connected to Thailand and China. People and products can board such trains, and they can reach anywhere in the region in a matter of hours. This is a significant step forward, and this will help Lao's economy expand faster, allowing them to pay off the expenditures of constructing this infrastructure. That is the definition of a wise investment. This isn't the only way they'll make money. Several videos continue to criticize Lao's financial problems, asking how can Lao possibly afford a high-speed railway given their economy, attempting to deflect attention away from the projects. However, they do have people actively campaigning to block these projects. For example, there is an item from 2018 titled Thailand Needs Hyperloop, Not China Built High-Speed Rail. Tanaton, that was initially published by Bloomberg News and is titled Thailand Needs Hyperloop, Not China Built High-Speed Rail, Tanaton. Tanaton is the billionaire leader of China's opposition and a billionaire himself. Also worth noting is that he was in the United States canvassing for political support ahead of the 2019 general election, which should tell you all you need to know about why he would say anything like this. Mr. Musk visited the Nevada Hyperloop test track, which is 500 meters in length. The facility includes mock-ups, a test track, and a 500-meter test track where they move test participants. That is all that Hyperloop has accomplished so far. After the Hyperloop is operational and begins transporting passengers into the United States, it will be years before they are ready to transfer this technology to Thailand, which could be 10, 20, or even 30 years in the future. Thailand has already squandered its opportunity at that point. All of these other countries will benefit from the Belt and Road Initiative while they are waiting for this technology, which may or may not be totally completed. In his return from the United States, Tanaton is saying that a businessman turned politician who is critical of Thailand's military regime has criticized the country's $5.6 billion high-speed rail project with China, stating that Hyperloop technology is a more modern alternative. Again, this is a technology that, for all intents and purposes, does not exist as an operational alternative, such as Richard Branson's Virgin Hyperloop 1 which is working on developing networks of pods that move at plane-like speeds to replace existing transportation infrastructure. This is beneficial to Thailand since it will assist the country in becoming the technical leader, while investing in high-speed trains results in the importation of everything from abroad. Mr. Manatan explained in an interview that moving first results in what the United States proxies do. They condemn and attempt to block these viable, realistic infrastructure improvements and then, they bid you practically nothing as an alternative. There is no such thing as a hyperloop in existence. Chinese leaders are concerned that if we come down here, they will be forced to play Gulliver to Southeast Asia's Lilliputians with the rope and stakes provided by the United States. Robert Kagan, one of the architects and proponents of the illegal who led the United States into the Iraq invasion in 2003, stated that the United States needs to encircle and contain China. These actions were consistent with the United States' objective of encircling and limiting China by pushing countries in Southeast Asia to complicate or cut off connections and ties with China. Tanaton is one of these Lilliputians, one of these teeny, extremely small individuals who work for the United States of America. Additionally, he intends to do everything in his power to encircle China by blocking the high-speed rail project and offering nothing in exchange. As a result, Countries and the people who live in these countries must come to a conclusion on what to do. The people of Thailand, for example, must determine whether or not they want to follow Tanaton, who is attempting to cancel legitimate programs that would surely benefit Thailand's development in exchange for a fiction that does not exist in reality. Then there are the likes like Tanaton, who is supported and sponsored by the United States, a country that is rapidly disappearing from the global scene. Or do they want to finish a project that Thailand is already working with China and continue to partner with a rising nation? Which option do they prefer? To me, it appears to be a no-brainer situation. So, what are your thoughts in this video? Let us know down at the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video 
so that it encourages to bring you more amazing and interesting videos every day. That said, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.